uh, how that starts to tie in bigger issues or, or how you kind of follow where that takes you and how that creates a piece. Um, so I think everyone here can do judge really well. Um, we learned that tonight. So I'm not going to even pass the mic around. Um, so if anyone just wants to answer that question. With, with the piece that I said today on entitlement, it was actually a job that I, I had recently and I, it was the actual you know, when I went around the office and met everyone, I immediately, like, there were certain people that just went like that, like, after, after shaking my hand. So it was that whole experience. Um, in that office, it was, you know, a small company, like 20 of us. There was maybe three women, so 17 men. Um, and out of just, I was also a woman as well, obviously. So, but I was the only person of color in that whole, you know, environment. And I was a woman. So for me, it was, it was an interesting experience because it's like, okay, well, yeah, I was hired and obviously I'm, you know, qualified to be a part of the team. But it was the fact that, like, I, I noticed little things throughout the time. Like, okay, if I came in like a minute late, it was just notice. Whereas everyone else is coming in when, I, you know, 20 minutes, whatever, no one says anything. But I, it was like, okay, well, hey, you know, you've noticed it, then you're, 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 you know, you're late. I'm like, well, it's only like one or two minutes. Everyone else gets to come in whenever they want and takes breaks whenever they want. So it was that experience. And just looking back on it, you know, how it progressed and things like that, it was, you know, so it's like, and then it came out to my sexuality later on uh, as, as the months progressed. So it was just like, it was like, you know, I, was, I don't, we like to use the word minority, but it was like, you know, minority after minority, like, just, you know, layers of, I don't know, just the isms, I guess, like mm -hmm. sexism, classism, whatever, it all applied to me, you know? So, yeah, just did that experience, and then as I was, you know, writing, it just came like, hey, wait, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not even a victim, actually. Whatever you're projecting on me, like, in fact, you know, I'm, I'm entitled, you know? So I, like, so that just, it just progressed to be a, a bigger piece. It was that anger that I felt in that experience. Anger. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Tucker. Well, for me, I, I, I grew up, well, I came from a Civil War country, um, Liberia. And um, so I, I have an experience of uh, uh, war and revolution and all that. And like um, <clears throat> I said, I, um, I was raised in the inner city of Boston. And I moved around a lot from here. So I, I, and I always know this on um, Independence Day, especially July 4th, there's always, this, uh, there's, there, there tends to be like the most fearful moment in the city. For us, because that's when you, you can't, you want to, if, if it's firecrackers or if it's somebody getting shot, and mm -hmm. usually you will be like, oh, let's go see the fireworks, but half of us don't want to go outside. Mm -hmm. but we don't, we don't, we don't, it's a risk for us to do that. So I always had this um, thing with, um, with Independence Day that I kind of um, hold brushed. Because if anybody's seen it as a, uh, it's a celebration, and for us, it's, it's, a, it's a tragic moment for most of our, for most of our, our experiences through um, independence day. And so I, I had a, a course that wanted me to write a poem. And um, I decided to write about independence day. And it's funny because I've been on July 3rd. <laughs> Right before the um, um, July 4th, and I just sat home and I just started writing it. So I, I have a question. Maybe it uh, might be too late to dive into this, but uh, when you talk about it, when we talk about and think about exclusion, it seems much of it has to do, not all of it, but much of it has to do with discrimination, either racial, uh, sexual orientation, uh, uh, sex, uh, men, women. Um, there's many different types of discrimination. Um, one of them is, is those of color. And the question I have is, what is it like to have President Obama as president? Does it, does it, does it make a difference? And if not, what would you want him to be doing about it? Tenth grader. Tenth grader. My English teacher had us write uh, 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 
moment of how we felt during that time when she kept it until we graduated. And I kind of read it. And then every time you read something that you read it, I was like, oh, that's crazy. I actually felt that way. <laughs> so for me, it, it, it was kind of scary. It was really scary because I think for a lot of minorities, they would read it that it was one of the scariest moments because they felt if there was any assassination, then this country would be dope. Yep, you're right. So, but as, as it progressed and that he's still in power and did really, there's no really that much racial effect <coughs> upon his part when he's in a position, you know, it unifies the country in a, in a significant way um, to me. And it also shows how far off the road that we've come. But I respect it and I, I like it. Um, I just want to say, everyone, um, this, there's a picture of Tucker up there from like, the last semester's performance. That's really awesome. Yeah. Where are you? I remember. Yeah. Um, so you should all check that out because he, he was in the civil disobedience performance from last semester, um, and it was really, really awesome. And he had like a solo that was really incredible. So. Um, yes. Yeah, Tucker. Okay. Um, I was just gonna title this question as follows. Um, yes. Great and it's wonderful. Um, I mean, to be able to turn on the television and see a first family who is of color, it's just a great thing, you know what I mean? Like, there are kids who are being born right now who get to turn on the TV and see that, you know? But also, I think, I mean, Obama's just a man, you know what I mean? There, there, there are so many of us in this country, and we anticipate this one guy, this first um, man to make this kind of history, to make such a huge change. And I think I, I have to remind myself that this is America, right? And there are always and have always been only two parties. And regardless of who's the face of that party, it's always going to be these two parties dictating whatever. There, there, I don't think there's this huge fight that we think there is, right? It's just these two types of people saying, having this conversation. And every now and then, we might like yell something into the conversation. But I don't I don't know that it's making such a huge shift. In my opinion, yeah. I agree. I mean, Trayvon Martin, I mean, it's like, I, I don't, I can't even begin. Like, this country, I mean, honestly, it, it's like, okay, well, it was built on the backs of slaves. I mean, the economic rise, we're the youngest country in the world, okay? How do we rise to be this, this awesome entity, this awesome power, it was on the backs of human beings? So, just the history of this country, I, like, I don't, I, I, I can't, I'm sorry, I just, whew, it's too much, it's too, it's too thick, I can't get into it, because I'm very, very, very extremely liberal, I guess, radical type. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't. I can't. I can't talk that question for me. It's just, I don't believe in this country at all. <laughs> 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 it's a lie. It's, it's, it's a lie. America's a lie. How can you say you're all men are created when you own slaves right in this? And you have to take away someone's. Because you own slaves, you have to make it that they're not human. When, I, I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> oh, <that's life. laughs> for me, I, I was raised in a um, predominantly black country that um, ex-slaves from America came in to establish. So my um, view on racism is so much different. Um, we, America sees Ku Klux Klan as white. We see Ku Klux Klan as black. We see them as the ex-slaves that came from America. Every country has, whoever is the majority within that country will always um, keep power. And I think when we keep this, and we, when we blame a minority or try to give an excuse for why um, certain people are in power and we don't question it, we, 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 we kind of like target it we don't really answer the question. I think we have to go. Let it be I. We understand this person is in power. But what do they really, how do they manipulate us? How do they lessen us? Um, it's not to blame, but it's rather to, to make a change. To understand their, that I. We are the minority. Mm -hmm. where, the word minority, I'm sorry, it's yeah. a lie. Minor and Latin means less. Mm -hmm. uh, the population in the world, how many, there's a billion people in China. How many people are in India? 
like the, the world population majority is people of color. So the word minority in itself is a lie. Because there's not less. People of color are the majority on the global scale. So, but I will go, I'm sorry. I, just, I, I hate that word minority because it, it tricks you into thinking that it does. less. When we do so, there's always a, a denotation and connotation. What we all, when we say minority, we all think about um, We don't see it as less. We see it as um, people, not less, but people, the population. Well, in a number sense, though. In the number sense, the sense, demographics, it's okay, well, there's mm -hmm. less. You know, people of color, the majority, you know, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, white Caucasian. And it's also the lot, okay, so poverty has a person of color face. But the majority in America are white people. The majority in America are actually on food stamps. The majority in America are on welfare. But because the minority, you know, it's given a, a brown face or a person of color face, when the majority of this country is, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just, for me, it's just that. It's a lie. It's, I'm sorry. I just don't. I, I mean, I just, oh. Um, so that question, like, yeah, that question just yeah. boiled up. It, it does. It's, it's really complicated. <laughs> It's only, to me, it's only controversy if you make it controversial. Um, if you feel offended. And you may have every reason to feel offended. But when somebody punches you in your mouth, um, you have the option to, to try to find out why that person punches me in the mouth, or um, you can just judge that person and punch them back in the mouth without finding a resolution to the conflict. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it goes back, and I could. I'm doing a, a, a graphic design project that shows um, economic discrimination. Um, now, the image that I show 